Hi everyone, just thought I would make a quick video. Uh, so guys, hey, you want some uh, Watchmen style? Check this out. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but uh, the Northern Lights have now become very visible uh, over North America, uh, and there's tons of articles about it. Uh, I just uh, saw one because someone sent it to us in the Inner Sanctum, and I'm just going to read one of the many articles. Uh, if you Google Northern Lights or Severe Geomagnetic Storm, you can read more. But let's just read a little... This is from space.com and it's called strongest solar storm in nearly six years surprises forecasters. <laughs> the most powerful solar storm in nearly six years slammed earth today, March 24th. But strangely, space weather forecasters didn't see it coming. Guys, I'm really reading the article. <laughs> strangely, the experts who have all the satellites and whose job it is to predict it, man, they didn't see it coming. Oh man, this is this is strange, guys. <laughs> Interesting. Let's keep reading. Um, the geomagnetic storm peaked as a severe G4 on the five grade scale, used by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to assess the severity of space weather events. The storm's unexpected ferocity not only made auroras visible as far south as New Mexico and the U.S., but it also forced spaceflight company Rocket Lab to delay launch by 90 minutes. So, guys, uh, whoa, you know what I thought when I saw this? First of all, so yeah, if anyone's not understanding the science lingo, uh, the northern lights are caused by the sun ejecting plasma, which travels towards the Earth, and it causes a lot of disruptions and, uh, guys, do you remember, uh, well, let's, let's rewind in time, like a month ago, remember the whole, like, Hey, the nukes are coming, the Northern lights are going to be visible. And then they weren't, but then like, uh, two weeks later they were, and I made a previous nuclear watchman, uh, update about it. Well, that was only a G2 on the scale, but now, oh my God, look, there's a G4 on the scale. Um, <laughs> wow. And so what I th thought <laughs> when I saw this article, I was like, wow, it surprised all the experts. It didn't surprise me. <laughs> Why? Well, let's just say a, a, a mysterious deity whispered into my ear something about, you know, the northern lights being visible. Then they were. Wow. Now they're even more visible. Uh, and so, guys, it could all just be a coincidence because also a lot of other prophets on YouTube and stuff are like, hey, northern lights coming, nukes coming, EMPs. Guys, you also remember uh, during that same time when I was like, yeah, the, the EMPs are going to hit, the nukes are going to come. Then like a week later, the EMP balloons flew over the U.S. launched by China. Oh, and now China and Russia have like uh, united in that super coalition and all the nuclear subships have surrounded us. So guys, this could all be a coincidence. Um, I think it's not, guys, because I wasn't surprised, you know, by these events that are now taking place. Well, you know, how is that? Did my mind just imagine that this all stuff? No, guys. <laughs> so anyway, but <laughs> I'll try to be serious about it, guys. This is a very serious thing. Okay. I try to get, I'm trying to get uh, serious now. So guys, notice how in this article it says like, uh, you know, that, that this geomagnetic storm has forced a space flight company to delay their launch by 90 minutes. Guys, I just had a thought as I was checking this out. It's like, do you know what problem with these northern lights, these geomagnetic storms? Well, why would they cause a, a company have to delay a rocket launch? Because they disrupt satellites. So guys, this should scare you somewhat. And by the way, I don't know if the nukes are going to hit right after this storm, but they might. So guys, check this out. So guys, do you know much about nuclear war? So they have all these systems that are called like launch on detect. What that means is they have systems run by satellites which are just floating above the earth, looking to see if the other side launches nuclear weapons, right? So imagine, you know, Russia launches a bunch of nukes. The U.S. has satellites that are just looking down for that. As soon as the U.S. sees that, they launch theirs. Because the whole thing with nukes is, is if the nukes from the other side catch you by surprise, blam, they slam into where? Into your side's nuclear launch facilities. Whole idea with nuclear war is like speed, launchers quick, take out the other side's ability to launch back. Because if you do that, the other side is, is gone, right? 
So how do you counter that? They studied this for years. It's this whole thing called launch on detect or whatever the technical term is. I forget. Whole idea is you have satellites above looking. So if Russia launches, the U.S. detects that, then the U.S. launches so that the U.S.'s missiles get away before the Russian nukes come down and take out the launch sites. So now you have both sets of missiles flying. Of course, the problem with these northern lights is what do they do? They disrupt the satellites that are supposed to send the launch on detect signal. So you know what I would do, you know, and believe me, if I've thought of this, I bet you Russia has too. What would be really smart would be to wait when you're going to launch until one of these storms hits from the sun. So now they can't detect the launch on your side because all their detection satellites, of course, yours would be disabled too, but you don't need the satellites to launch the things. You need the satellites to detect when the other side launches. So what I would do if I were like a nuclear launch planner is I would get the whole strike set up. I would maybe surround the other side with nuclear subs, have it ready. Maybe I'd fly some balloons over from my Chinese friends to get all the targeting data ready. And then I would wait for one of these big storms to hit. So when the storms hit and it del- it screws up the uh, satellites, excuse my language, so that they can't detect the launch, then I would launch, right? So the other side would really be caught off guard. That would be a really smart thing to do because little moments of time are very important in nuclear war. And if one of these geomagnetic storms, as we see, why did the, the company have to s- delay their launch? Because the storm is screwing up the satellites and all their systems like that, right? So they can't see, they have to like, it's like it makes you blind to the sky, right? But you, but as far as the ICBM set up and stuff, they're already targeted. They already have all the stuff. They don't need any data from the sky. You need the data from the sky to know when the other side launches, But if you already have those ICBMs targeted with targeting data, you already have them all set up. All you need to launch is to push a button, right? So what I would do is, gosh, if I already had the nuke subs around, if I already had those balloons giving me the targeting data, which they do, I would just sit there and wait for one of these storms to hit, knowing it's going to throw off the other side's detection of my launch. And then when the storm was at its peak, I would launch. And now the nukes would be flying. The other side would be critically delayed in detecting. And now the other side would throw a few back, but they're, they're, they're going to miss it. They're going to get some of their ICBMs coming through and smashing down into our launch sites before we can launch back. And that would be a really smart way to start a nuclear war, if you think about it, because they're always going to get some back. But man, if I had all of Russia and China and surrounded... Man, I would be like, this is a good time to launch. So I don't know. I don't know if they're going to launch now, but also, you know, if there was a G2 and now there's a G4 and there's a couple of weeks from now, there's a G5. I mean, I don't know if you guys follow the logic of what I'm saying here. I don't know. God hasn't told me they're going to launch this time or whatever. I was just thinking about it logically. And I was like, man, this would be like the perfect natural blindness event to hide your launch. And in nuclear war, if you can get that five minutes ahead of the other side, right, because it takes time to launch the ICBMs, you can't just instantly launch them. There's like a there's like a little time delay where they have to, like, power up, so to speak. So if you can get yours launched in a moment of blindness, then even if they detect it, but it's too late in the ballistic arc, they don't launch in time because the whole blast doors have to go away. They have to right. time is so crucial in nuclear war. Because if you detect it right on launch, you have time to give the launch order. So yours get off before the others take out your ability to launch. But if you lose like five or 10 minutes and suddenly it's like you don't detect the launch, but instead you detect when they're coming down the ballistic arc, you can give the launch orders and they're going to bam, smash out your nuclear launch sites. And now maybe the other side sends a salvo of like 200, right? And you don't have enough time. You detect a few of the launches so you can like launch back, like, right? But the whole thing is like thrown off and delayed. That's how nuclear war works, right? And I would say right now the USA is not in a good position, right? It's it's not in a good position to fight a nuclear war. And Russia and China, they're just like right there. So uh, look, guys, let's take this back to a spiritual side. Guys, this is just my view. Now seems like a really good time to pray to me. I would pray. I mean, I'm praying myself, but guys, if you're not praying, this could be a great time to pray. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are seeing uh, what I'm saying here, but guys, let's take this back to Jesus. Let's thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
for getting us out of here before this comes down. And let's pray for all the people who are still somehow not seeing this, who still somehow don't believe in God and think this is all a coincidence. And let's thank God for the prophetic warnings that he's given us. Uh, because guys, you know, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. That's just my view. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go back to enjoying my evening. Uh, I hope everybody is having a great time. Uh, and I'll, I'll throw a couple links in the description of the super, uh, Northern Lights uh, event that's going on, uh, but yep, <laughs> I just got to keep reading a little more, guys, because it's funny. Geomagnetic storms are disturbances to Earth's magnetic field caused by solar material from coronal mass ejections, large expulsions of plasma, and geomagnetic field from the sun's atmosphere. It turns out that this particular geomagnetic storm was triggered by a stealth, and yes, the word stealth's in quotes, a stealth coronal mass ejection, as the name suggests, is rather tricky to detect. <laughs> this particular geomagnetic storm was triggered by a stealth CME, which, as the name suggests, is rather tricky to detect. Well, I would say God detected it coming, and then God, you know, told some people about it, and so... You know, it wasn't stealth in that sense, but for people that aren't into God, it was it was tricky to detect. Even all the experts with all their detecting satellites, they 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 couldn't detect it, you know. But uh, but God detected it and even told some people about it. Cool, thank you, God. <laughs> okay, let's keep reading it, guys, because it does make me laugh. Look, it's it's you have to admit it's funny how they write these articles. They're not trying to make them comedy articles. This is on space.com. Um, it's not, it's not the onion, guys. I'm reading from space.com. All right. Let's see. All right. Let's see. National Space and Weather Service announced a geomagnetic storm watch on March 22 to come into effect on March 23 to 25 with a possible moderate G2 storm expected on March 24. So forecasters weren't completely caught off guard. However, they didn't expect a magnitude G4 storm. It wasn't until uh, 004100 on March 24th that NOAA, <laughs> NOAA, N-O-A-A, the national something or other, NOAA, hey, NOAA updated the warning to a severe G4 storm, which was after a stronger than forecasted G3 storm escalated to a G4 at 12.01 a.m. Man, these experts, they're like... Uh, it just takes them a while. They're like, oh, it's it's not ever going to happen. It's been six years. Oh, wait, one's hitting us. It's only a G2. The super satellites were like, wait, it's a G3. Oh, it's hitting now. It's a G4. Um, hey, guys, let's just say this. You know, the, the super satellites. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm looking at a picture of it now. Wow. Look, it's like totally covering America. Interesting. Could be a coincidence. Um, it, it doesn't look good, guys. In the picture, it's like this. It looks like a red ring of death. Okay, guys. Try to get, I'm trying to get serious here, guys. I'm trying to get serious, but it's just like, you know, let's keep reading it. Okay, that may not help me get more serious, whatever. Let's just read it, Evan. Okay. These nearly invisible storms launch much more slowly than eruptive CMEs and are very difficult to observe, leaving the sun's surface without specialized training, she added. Of course, don't they have that? I mean, it's almost like they're making excuses now for why they didn't notice it before. They're like, this stuff is hard to do without specialized training and equipment. Uh, Ma'am, don't you have that? Isn't that what your agency does? Uh, we, ne we need more money. Uh, we, we need to get better. Then we'll be able to notify you like uh, like 63 minutes in advance before the storm. Okay, ma'am. Um, what can we do to get you more money? Uh, excuse me. I've just been told that all the money is going to the Ukraine uh, war. Uh, ma'am, is any of the money going to upgrading our nuclear defenses? Uh, I can't speak anymore. I've just been fired from my job and we're going to write down uh, your name and address press conference over. All right, guys, I was, I was just improvising that, but let's see if we can keep reading it. Okay. All right. Let's try to read it seriously. These nearly invisible storms launch much more slowly than nuclear missiles, than eruptive CMEs and are very difficult to observe leaving the sun's surface without specialized training, she said, adding that the stealth CMEs <laughs> can also be camouflaged by other more dense structures emanating from the sun, which makes them difficult to observe. This is why they are the cause of problem geomagnetic storms, like the G-form 
G4 level storm we are in now, Skov continued. You can learn more about these stealthy solar storms in Skov's latest YouTube video, where she describes the space weather event in more detail. <clears throat> All right. NOAA ranks geomagnetic storms on a scale running from G1, which could cause an increase in auroral activity around the poles and minor fluctuations in power supplies up to G5, which includes extreme cases like the Carrington event, a colossal solar storm that occurred in September 1859, which disrupted telegraph services all over the world and triggered auroras so bright and powerful that they were visible as far south as the Bahamas. Strong geomagnetic storms can be troublesome for spaceflight. As they increase the density, SpaceX, guys, okay, it's getting kind of dull now. You, you can read the article yourself, guys. Um, anyway, uh, the, the point is, is that uh, something made this hard to see for the experts. They would say they needed more money or training or something. Others would say maybe Satan blinded them, which could have been part of it, guys. Maybe maybe reading the Bible would have helped them predict things better. Hey, that's going to be my advice. Guys, let's send them Bibles to the, the NOAA Space Safety Board. Let's send them some Bibles and be like, hey, guys, let's, let's just put some little bookmarks in the Book of Revelation section and be like, hey, guys, here's a, here's a way to detect things better. Get to know Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, with that. Uh, I love you guys, and I'll be back soon with more sermons. I just had to take a little time out. Uh, this is Evan, the Nuclear Watchman, signing off. And may our Lord Jesus Christ continue to bless and protect each and every one of you. Amen. Jesus, coming soon. Yeah! Love you guys. See you soon.